Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Mr. Willie, also known as Iron Python, and I'm here to give you guys another tutorial. We were using Locket, and then we were using Deadbolt. Well, I'm removing both of those plugins. Well, I already removed Locket, but I'm removing Deadbolt from the server and replacing it with an even tougher plugin. Why? Well, I'm kind of tired of babysitting you guys all the time. I, I don't feel like I'm running a kindergarten here, so I don't see why I should, uh, be treating you guys like kids uh, and babysitting you and acting like your parent all the time. So because of that, I need a stricter plugin, something that is pretty much foolproof and no way of being able to be broken into and that kind of thing. Now, Deadbolt used a sign-based plugin, yay, signs, and you had to place it on everything, chest, doors, furnaces, and so on. Well, the new plugin doesn't use signs at all, so you can't break the sign temporarily disabling the protection and being able to get into things like through doors and stuff like that. Now it's actually protected on the block itself. So how do you protect things like a chest for instance? If you can't put a sign on it, is there a whole bunch of commands? Well there is going to be some commands, there is going to be some changes to the rules because of this, but don't worry it's not that heavy. To protect a chest all you do is first you put a chest down and now it's protected. I know it's very complicated and mind-boggling and will throw you for loops but that's really all you need to do. This chest is private, only I can get through it. Nobody else can unless I let them, which I'll show you that in a bit. It also works for double chests. So if I add a double chest here, both chests are still protected by me. Um, and if I destroy one of the side chests, the uh, first chest is still protected. And I can just put this somewhere else and now both of these are protected. So it's just as simple as that. It's not very complicated at all. Now you wanna protect doors. Well. Let's go ahead and put a double door here, and as you know, in Tele doors they work together and all that fun stuff. But you want to protect it so no one else can get through these doors. Well, all you do is type in slash C private, and it, if I can write, that'd be great. And then it'll tell you to left click the block to protect, so that door. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here, so C, private, now I'm dyslexic, so typing and saying at the same time is hard for me, that's why I keep spelling things wrong when I'm saying it at the same time, but anyways, these both are now protected by me, only I can go through these doors, and you do have to protect both of them, if you protect this door, but not this door, people won't be able to go through the left door, but they can still go through the right door, um, so make sure you do the protection on both doors, if it's a double door, now, if you, um, let's say you wanted to make it so that um, the door was password protected. It's not private or anything. But it's password protected. Well, you can type in slash C password and then your password. Now, these doors have already been created. If I set it up this way, it'll tell me, oh, you can't do that because it's already been set up as private. So you need to modify it. So C modify. And you can set this up to be password that way. So password, and you type in the password. So test. All right. Now left click the door to or protect it. And you do have to do this once again for a double door. So it's usually best to just password protect one door, not a double door. Um, but now, if I try and open it, I can't even open it because it's password protected. See this one? I can still open it. That's why you don't want to do it for a double door. But how do I unlock this one? Well, it just tells me right there. See, unlock, and then the password that you wrote. So it would be test. I'm not sure how I did that. OK, <laughs> apparently the plugin was confused about something. I'm a, I might have accidentally spelt it wrong or something. Anyways, password accepted. And now I can open this door. And the nice thing about the password protected doors, it's very useful for you and your friends. Like maybe you want to allow you and some of your friends to open the same door. And maybe you decide, you know, I don't really want this person to know. So you change the password and you tell the new password to only the people you want to let in. And another nice thing about the password protection thing is it saves it per login. So I already typed in the password once, so I can open and close this door as much as I want. The moment I log off and log back into the game, then I have to type in the password again. 
So you don't have to keep on typing the password over and over again every time you want to open the door because that would be time consuming. You only have to do it once. Now you can also do that for um, trap doors here. So let's protect this one, make it private. See, private. But let's also make it so not only I can open it, but the Wombat of Doom. I want him to open it. I also want Majestic Wind to open it. So Majestic Wind. And then left click. And there you go. That's been a protected trapdoor. And I'm giving rights to Majestic Wind and the Wombat of Doom. So they can open that as well. Now how do you check to make sure what type of door it is? See Info. And you left click. And it will tell you that this is owned by me, it's protected by a privacy, which means only users permitted can open it, and Majestic Wind, who's a player, and the Wombat of Doom, who's a player, have the right to open that uh, door. Now you can also do password, uh, that you know same thing with chests. You can also make chest password protected. So you can make it so that it's like this door, where you have to type in a password once to open this chest, and ever since until you log off again, you just can open that chest as much as you want. You can give the password out to a certain chest to your friends. Um, but now let's say, you know, this is nice and everything, but I now want to remove uh, Majestic Wind from the rights here. Well, you do modify. Come on, you modify. Oh, I forgot to put the C there first. C. Modify. There we go. And you type a minus and the player's name. So Majestic Win. So it's kind of like remove Majestic Win. And now I want to add someone else. Um, so let's add in Bob here. So now it's going to ask me to left click. So there you go. So I've removed Majestic Wind and added Bob. So you can do multiple changes to a, um, to a door, chest, whatever, um, without needing to worry about it. Uh, the only reason I open is because of the uh, the IntelliDoor thing. Um, so that's uh, very convenient, especially for doing modifications to it. You also can uh, do modify to change the type. So like how I did with the password, I can do uh, C, modify. And <coughs> some of the things I can do is I can do password. And then the password I want. Um, I can also do private if it wasn't a private sign to begin with, like that password sign or door. If I wanted to change that back to a private, I can type in private. I can make it public, which public is um, very useful because that means it's still owned by you, which means nobody can change it, but um, anybody can use it. Uh, so that's another thing that you can add to it as well. Now, you know, furnaces is a very nice thing to be able to protect because, you know, you don't want anybody stealing your smelted ore and all that. It acts just like chest. You place it, it's protected. You don't have to do anything to it. You can also do everything that you've done to the doors here. You can do the password protection. You can allow certain users to allow it into it um, and so on. You can also do um, dispensers. So once again, it's a place type item. Um, wooden doors, iron doors, and... Uh, the trap doors are ones that aren't place automatic set up. Those are the ones that are, you have to uh, place it and then tell it to be. So by default, anybody can open it and all that. It's not protected or anything. But you can make these if you feel like it. The only ones that are is the chest, dispensers, and the furnaces. Now, this furnace, let's say it's part of my town, Iron Town. And I want people of my town to be able to open this furnace. Well, if I keep adding and removing people, I have to keep modifying every single one of my furnaces. And if I have like five furnaces that I want the community to use, I have to change all five of those every single time. It's very complicated and a waste of my time. So there's an easier way of doing it. So see, modify. And then you type in T for town and colon and then the town name. So iron, and because my town has a space in it, you have to do an underscore uh, for spaces. If you don't have a space in your town, you don't have to worry. So iron town, and then you click it. It will tell you this unknown local protection interface dot rights dot register dot town error, 
but don't worry, don't go freaking out and jumping out the window or anything. If you just type in C info, you can right click it just like you did with that. And as you see, here is a uh, Iron Town with Town. So that's why I said players before, and now it says Town. So I can say Iron Town is allowed to use it. I can also say specific players. Maybe they're not part of Iron Town, but I still want them to have the right to it. I can add them to the list. Um, and you remove it the same way as you do with players. So C modify, and then minus key, and then T colon, and the name. And now I've removed it. And once again, it says that weird unknown local protection thing. But you don't have to worry. It did work. And if you feel uncomfortable with it and you want to make sure, just type in info and you can check. And as you see, nothing's been here. And at, you do have a note here to allow you to, you know, say add players and groups access. So if you ever forget the command for that, you can do it that way. Or you can type in LWC. And that will give you a list of the commands. Um, you don't even have to worry about 50% of this. But it is nice to know these. Private, public, password, unlock, and modify, and info. Those are the ones that you will really be using. All the other ones you will probably never use. Um, like for the menu thing, for instance. Basic is what this menu layout is. If you type in LWC menu advanced, you'll see a much more complicated menu. But once again, you really don't need to learn anything more than what I've just taught you here. Um, a few things that I do want to say. One, this door right here is protected by Majestic Wind. So it says, this door is locked by a magical spell. Well, there's a pressure plate here. With Deadbolt, I could step on this pressure plate and it would still open the door. Well, with this new uh, plugin that we're using, I can't even stand on the pressure plate. Um, it won't uh, go or anything. But things like levers and buttons, they still activate the door. So make sure that if you're protecting your door and you want it to automatically open, you can put a uh, pressure plate in front of it and it will still be protected. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but buttons and that kind of thing will override the uh, door permission. So don't put a lever next to it and expect the door to still be locked by you. You can do like the hidden switch. I don't have one obviously, but I could make this a hidden switch and have it where the hidden switch is protected by me and that would open it up as well. So you know there's that kind of thing you can do. Um, another thing I wish to mention is as you know we use Dead Man's Chest so it's called Tombstone. So if I flew way up there, dropped down and I would die, I'd have a chest with a sign over me saying when I died. Well, that chest is actually now protected. Nobody can get into that chest for the first 10 minutes. That chest will stay active for 30 minutes, uh, and then it'll just go away. So if you don't go to your chest by the first 10 minutes of when it's protected, after that 10 minutes, it's free for theft. So if you're walking around, and you see a dead man's chest out there, like one of these with a sign on top, and the time says, let's just say, 8 o'clock and you look at your time and it's 8, 11. Well, the protection's already expired on it, so you can open that chest and you can loot all the stuff in it. That's perfectly fine. You're hearing that from a GM. Um, you are allowed to steal stuff from tombstones out in the wild if the uh, protection has expired from the chest. So make sure you go and take your stuff before that 10 minutes have expired and the chest will stay out there for 30 minutes. Um, I do wish to mention one thing. If you do any commands like the privacy or protection thing to a chest or a door that's not part of your land, you will be jailed and possibly banned from the server. So do be aware of that. And for those of you who are on my server right now and have yet to transfer your stuff from the deadbolt, you know, being protected by signs, don't worry. The sign thing is still there for a couple weeks. Don't use it because I am going to be removing it. But it's there to just make sure that your chests are still protected because all the chests that have been placed before today are not protected. So you have to go in and you have to type in C private and then click on the chest. Now this one's already been private, but you have to do that to every single one of your chests and any doors that you had at lock and sign on as well. Um, do be aware that uh, fence gates are not protected currently by this plugin, so you have to find another way of protecting fence gates, either by replacing it with the door or something like that. But all furnaces and dispensers and doors and chests that you've placed that have a, 
a deadbolt sign on it. That deadbolt sign will be removed in about a week or two. So make sure you go in and you protect all of your stuff and remove the, uh, the privacy sign so that uh, when the deadbolt plugin gets removed from our server, you're not unprotected from uh, theft and all that stuff. So I uh, did want to mention that. Also, hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. You can comment below or ask me on the server or on the forums at andoria.crazyforus.com. Uh, and I shall see you all later. Oh, and by the way, for all you Halo fans who are watching this, don't worry. I'm going to post a Halo video tomorrow. Uh, I wanted to post this now because it's, uh, it's a very important video for me to tell my users. Uh, I was going to post a Halo video today, but instead of double posting videos, I will be posting the Halo video tomorrow, and it's a campaign mission with me and the Wombat of Doom, and trust me, it is quite hilarious, so make sure you check my channel tomorrow if you're into my Halo videos. Anyway, I shall see you all later. This is Mr. Willie signing off. Adios.